Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be going over uh, uh, one of our gear list reviews. Basically everything that I carry uh, on a backpacking trip. Typically what I'm going to show you today is, is about a seven day trip, but this is easily pared down to a, you know, a three to five day trip or, or ramped up to nine, nine, ten, eleven days. Um, so what I have on me now is, is, is pretty much everything that I'm wearing. I'll show you all my gear that I carry with me, uh, whether that's in the pants and the jackets. And then we'll also start going through my pack and the gear there and show you all the stuff that I typically will take on a seven day trip out into the woods here. And so hopefully that will give you a good feel for, uh, for your lists and, and what you're gonna carry with you. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I say that in all my videos. This is just what, just what works for me personally, but hopefully that will help you kind of figure out where to start, what additional gear you might wanna add, or what gear you might want to take away. You'll find that I tend to be very redundant in my gear. Sometimes I'm, I'm out there on my own, so I like to have a lot of redundancy. So at the end, I'll also kind of show you where some areas you could save some weight if you want to, or if you've got a buddy going with you, you can easily kind of break up some of this stuff and, and show some of that. So hang in there and let's get started. So on these first three slides here, I'm just going to show you the actual gear that I carry on myself. Uh, either it's the, the clothing that I wear in the first one, we'll show you the base layers, the second one kind of the layers I wear over that, and then the, the last slide, the third one, will be all the gear that I carry in my pockets, on a lanyard around my neck, um, things like that. So check out these next three and that'll kind of give you an idea of the, the gear that I carry just on myself personally. So in this slide here, we're going to show you the stuff that I swap out uh, with my archery stuff if I'm out rifle hunting. Um, I have kind of two uh, shell cases here. One has uh, three clips in it with three uh, uh, bullets in each of those, and then a, a shell clip. A lot of times I might leave that shell clip back at home and just take the, the three clips plus the one extra. That gives me uh, 12 rounds, which is is not bad and helps me pare down a little weight, but I, I've shown both here because sometimes I will take both on, on longer trips. Um, these things, when I sub them out, typically I'll, I'll sub out uh, my, uh, my pistol if I'm taking my rifle. I'll take that binocular case off the hip belt of my backpack that we'll uh, show you in the next video. And then that weird green uh, tube thing here is uh, what I'll actually carry my tripod in. I'll strap that to the side of my pack and it allows me to just reach over my shoulder and pull my tripod out in one motion. So if I need it quickly, I don't have to take off my pack. I'm ready to, to go ahead and get into a shooting position very quickly. Uh, to the left of that is a binocular adapter that allows me to mount those binoculars on that same tripod. So I can very quickly deploy that, uh, put my binoculars on that tripod mount, uh, for for better glassing if I'm gonna have a long glassing session on a ridge or something like that um, And then the Badlands case uh, again I step out for that that binocular hip belt case because when I'm rifle hunting I I tend to be glassing and range finding uh, quite a bit more 
So I'm going to show you this angle real quick just because in a second when I dismantle this pack this is going to be a one thing along with a camera adapter that's not going to be in my pack that will be on the gear list. So I just want to give you a good view of those. This tripod serves a, a multitude of functions from just a tripod. It unscrews to, to be uh, walking sticks. I can use it as tent poles. I can use it as a, a standing all the way down to a sitting tripod for my rifle when I'm rifle hunting. Um, just nice lightweight device that has a multitude of purposes, but you won't see that as I as I dismantle the pack And here's that tripod again just showing that little camera adapter that I keep in the top pocket of my pack um, And I'll show you that top pocket as we go through this as well Okay, now we're gonna dismantle this pack and just kind of uh, work our way in uh, now I'm gonna kind of show you what's on the outside of the pack and kind of dismantle it down to a, a day pack now we're going to come back kind of bag by bag and just kind of talk a little bit about what's in each one other than maybe my food bag. I've got my food bag on the outside here. You'll see in my packing I use a lot of Cuban fiber sacks. Um, these are very lightweight, uh, pretty much waterproof sacks uh, that help compartmentalize my gear. So first off, we can take off our food bag. You can see on here that you can extend this food bag up. Um, I have different size bags, one for smaller trips and one for bigger trips. So I can just add days incrementally and increase the size of my food bag. Um, this is all without using the, uh, the load shelf on my pack here. So we're going to go ahead and just, uh, just peel that off. The top there. And then on this other side here we've got our bow. Um, that's just clipped into the side clips. We'll take off the bow there. And we'll set that aside. Um, on my trips I like to... Uh, depending on where I'm going, take a, a pistol and or bear spray. Sometimes I'll take those, sometimes none, sometimes one. I won't get into whether you want to take these in the woods or not. Uh, if you've ever had a bear come after you before though, uh, I, I tell you what, peace of mind, this really helps out on a trip. So I'm not going to take that off the bag, but I'll just show that to you there. On the other side, I've got a binocular case. That's right here. Um, that I keep my binoculars in. When I'm rifle hunting, I use a little bit of a different setup and I will uh, put pictures in here showing my rifle setup. Um, and what I'll actually do is I carry this on a chest case. I happen to use a Badlands chest harness um, because I tend to access my binoculars a lot more when I'm rifle hunting and do a, a lot more scanning with that. But when I'm archery hunting, I just keep it on my help belt here to help reduce weight from carrying that, that extra pack. So then on the side here, when I'm hiking in, I have a, a, one of uh, their solo pouches here. Uh, this, this pouch uh, uh, will fit any bag uh, pretty much in the, the Stone Glacier lineup. So we'll slide this off, and that way I can reduce this down to a day pack. And so initially I keep my water in here. Eventually this water is going to go inside in a little bit in a little pouch there uh, But this just makes it nice so I can carry a little bit more in the, the main pouch here for longer trips Shorter weekend trips. I'll forego this though and just pack in the little little main bag there On top I'll Pop this off right underneath an easy access is my rain jacket here Then the top itself can easily slide off And we'll go over what's in there again uh, as we will all these other bags just showing you kind of how I compartmentalize so that way I can just pop this off this stays in camp and I'm working my way down to my uh, my day bag so on this stone glacier there's two pockets on the top here uh, the front one I keep all my little knickknacky stuff again we'll go over that in our review again um, but that all stays in the bag for my day hunting pack then we'll open up the main bag here, the main compartment. My rain pants are in there. I've got my sleeping bag. This is actually a, a Z-Quilt sleeping bag. Um, what you use is up to you. Um, but in the future, I'll show you my sleep system, which is in here. I tend to usually sleep in a hammock that I also have set up that allows me to go to the ground and use the tarp over my hammock as kind of like a little A-frame tent on that. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this video, but a lot of people have asked about my sleep system and what I tend to use, especially on, on solo hunts. Um, so we'll get into that at another time. But in this video, I actually will show you what's in that bag. I just won't show you the setup. So uh, 
then as we keep going, I've got uh, my clothes bag uh, with all my clothes. We'll open that up and show you that in a second. We've actually got my, my sleep system bag. This has my hammock, my sleeping pad. I'll show you and give you a few tips on cutting weight if you don't want to use a sleeping pad, um, as well as the tarp that goes over my hammock here. Uh, I've got my uh, gaiters in case the weather turns south. I've got my emergency first aid kit and repair kit. Uh, this has everything to repair my bow, repair my pack, repair my clothes, uh, plus essential first aid gear. Um, this we've already done a review on, so if you're interested in that, just go to my, my videos and, and look up my first aid and, and repair kit, and uh, it'll have everything in this bag. So we won't get into this bag in this video. Then some of this other stuff uh, will stay in my bag for my day hunt. I've got my uh, pack cover, my rain cover. I've got my uh, game bags for when I, I get an animal. And then in the bottom of this, I've got uh, an extra tarp. Uh, I use this for a number of things. It's in my day bag, so if I happen to be way back in away from camp and I get an animal down, have to spend the night, this can uh, be an emergency shelter. I can use it to help clean out or cover the meat of my animal, um, or I can lay it on the ground for my sleep system if I can't find two trees, two good trees to hang my hammock up from. This uh, will be my ground cloth then that I'll put my sleeping pad on top of my sleeping bag. But that stays in the bottom. This here is where my water pouch now goes into for my, for my day pack. I can just open it up and there's a little drink tube in the back that opens up there. So typically what I'll do is my rain gear will then go back inside of here, both my jacket and my pants, and then I'll fold this back up um, and make that into my, my day bag there. Um, so next we'll start getting into some of those individual bags and what's in those bags and what I'm carrying in them. So from here we're going to go through all these bags in my pack so you can kind of see what I got, got in each one. We're going to kind of burn through each of these fairly quickly. Uh, don't worry about missing things at the end of each video and the end of the, the movie. I'll have still pictures and lists of what I've got in each of these. Um, but just mainly so you can kind of see how I'm packing. But this is my food bag. It can be extended for more days or less days like uh, with bigger bags, smaller bags just strapped to the front of the pack. It's in a, a Dyneema or Cuban fiber bag. These are very lightweight bags, pretty much waterproof, uh, so it helps keep my, my bag compartmentalized. I'm not gonna go through uh, all my food items in this just because our diet individually will tend to vary so much, um, but pretty much it'll be a mix of dehydrated food and then I'll have individually packed day, day bags that I'll put in my backpack that have more snacky things, nuts, uh, sometimes fruit, uh, jerky, um, usually a bar of some kind, sometimes a little peanut butter and honey cups. Um, and each day I'll try to put kind of a little bit something different or a little surprise for myself. Sometimes it's nice when you're in the back woods just to get that, that little surprise, that little extra oddly in the woods. It's sometimes just the, the simple things in life. But I am going to open this up and just show you a few things. Uh, the first one is uh, I do have a carabiner on here. When I'm in bear country, I can I can throw this up in a tree. The Cuban fiber bag does help reduce scent somewhat. Um, so inside this, uh, I've got my jet boil. So it's right there with all my food stuff. This is the micro mo. Uh, has a cup for coffee and things integrated. It's really nice. Um, I've got a spork attached to the side of that. I like the long handled sporks. Um, the short ones, you'll tend to get your uh, your hand down in the food while you're while you're eating there. So the long handle on those bags is really nice if you if you like dehydrated food. Um, inside of this, it holds the the gas canister, uh, which is typically enough for about a week, depends on the temperature a little bit outside. If it, if it gets too cold or if you're pushing past seven days, you'll probably need more canisters than that. And then it's also got the burner down inside of there um, also uh, for your, your jet boil system and the support for the base. In addition, without getting into the food, I've got uh, 50 feet of Dyneema cord. I have this in there uh, to hang my bag from trees and stuff like that. Dyneema cord or Cuban fiber is the same material these bags are made out of. It's very strong, very lightweight. It's a little more expensive, uh, but if you're looking at, at cutting ounces, that's a, that's a good way to go.
So next up we've got our uh, our top pouch uh, that goes on top of the bag. This comes off and stays in camp. So inside of this, I've got a little bag of over booties. Um, it's nice to get back at camp and get some of these very lightweight uh, booties that go on over your socks. They kind of have a little pad in the bottom. They're not ideal, they're not perfect, they're a little slippery, but I, I tell you what, uh, at nighttime you get back to camp getting your boots off and having something to just slide over your your socks uh, as slippers to wear around so your socks don't get wet uh, or, or dirtier than they already are. These can be, uh, can be really nice. Um, extra toilet paper uh, in my day bag as we get towards that pocket. We have toilet paper in there too. Um, I carry a uh, little uh, Apple iPod shuffle uh, and just put some, uh, some audio books on there. Uh, days if you get really rained in or something and, and can't get out and hunt as much or need to dry out or just need a, a day in camp having a little audio book you can listen to or some nice music uh, can be really nice. Uh, typically I'll also download uh, some elk bugles and cow sounds on there to kind of kind of listen to and refresh my mind as to what those sound like. Then I've got a, a four liter water bag uh, by MSR with a, a spout on it. And that goes with uh, an MSR gravity-fed uh, water system. This uh, gravity-fed water system works really nicely for lots of water at camp because you can first fill up a dirty water bag that's four liters. You can fill up your four liter bag, um, then fill up this and carry both back to camp and you've got uh, eight liters of water right there, four of clean and four of dirty that then at camp you can run into your clean bag as this starts to get depleted. Uh, very lightweight, fast filter system. The only downside with gravity fed is you have to be able to fill up these bags. So if you're just finding a little trickle of water and there's not a lot of water in this kit also, in addition to the, the gravity fed tube by MSR, is a little titanium cup I put in there. So that way if there's just a little trickle of water, you can fill that up and fill up your, uh, your dirty bags from that. And uh, so it can pretty much get water just, a, just about anywhere with, with that. I carry uh, scent-free field wipes uh, just to give my, myself a bath every few days or clean up after I, I use the restroom after the call of, of nature out there. And then uh, some scent-free deodorant. Uh, depending on the length of the trip, uh, I'll try to use a, a tube that's uh, not as full, so it's not quite as heavy. And then I've got just a little thing of, uh, of toothpaste uh, in here, a little travel tube, and then a, uh, a uh, fold-out uh, toothbrush as well um, for the field. So that, uh, that takes care of uh, that bag there. So this is a Stone Glacier scope pocket, um, a spotting scope pocket that they sell with the bag. Um, typically, as I've said before, I use my binoculars on a, on a tripod. The areas I hunt just don't really warrant a spotting scope in, in northern Idaho. Uh, but this would very well serve that case if you needed it to uh, very easily. But typically on my pack in, I actually use it as a hydration pouch. And then once I get to camp, I'll slide this out and slide it back in the main bag. And this will become my, my uh, day supply of water when I go out for the day. Uh, then as you saw earlier, I've got the four liter bag and then the clean bag and then the four liter dirty bag in that gravity fed system. Uh, so really when I bulk up on water, um, I, can, I can carry 10 liters. And that makes a lot less trips to a water source. Uh, as most of you know when you're out backpacking, uh, sometimes those water sources can be a, a ways from where you want to camp sometimes. Uh, so only having to make uh, occasional trips uh, every, every little bit will, will save you a lot of time and allow more time for hunting. 
then typically there's still room in the bottom of this for other things. A lot of times I'll throw uh, stuff like my, my rain pack cover in there as, as well, uh, just because there's extra room for stuff in the, in the bottom of this. It's a pretty, pretty large pocket. Uh, so that's what I've got there for you. All right, next we're gonna dump out the top gear pocket on my pack. Uh, it's the really the only single pocket on the outside of this pack. If you wanna know more about this pack, um, you can look at my gear review on, on Stone Glacier Solo uh, pack. Typically take some scent wafers, uh, just more stuff to, to cover up my, uh, my scent when I'm out there. I've got my uh, uh, boning out bag here, which I'll open up that in, uh, in just a second. I've got my uh, toilet paper bag. This has a, a whole bunch of uh, toilet paper crammed in here. Believe it or not, there's about seven days worth in here. But then as I showed you in the, the other compartment, I do have extra toilet paper just in case. Inside here, I also have a little titanium shovel that I can use for varying things, but also just to dig a pit. So if I'm staying in area and using the restroom and I can actually dig a little hole that helps reduce scent also in the area. And then in here, I also carry a, a, a little ounce of sanitizer and a little ounce of soap. This is biodegradable soap, so I can also use it to, to wash up stuff, my jet boil if I need to, uh, or wash clothes if I need to. But usually I don't need to with the amount of clothes that I carry back there. Uh, but I keep those in there to keep my hands clean too uh, when I'm out, out doing stuff. Uh, I carry an extra bow release. I'll say it again and again, I like redundancy my release happens to break, I don't have to come out of the field to get another one, so I, I carry a, a spare release. This is a, my battery bag. Um, I'll bust that open in just a second once I get the backpack off of here. And that's the, the contents of my, my top bag. So, inside the battery bag, uh, I carry one of these little Goal Zeros. Uh, these are nice because they have a, a little flashlight built into them. And then they have a little uh, USB port too, so you can charge any of your electronics from AA batteries. But then I make sure in all of my, my gear too, from my uh, 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 Garmin Rhino to my headlamp, that they take AA batteries so that I can use this. I'll uh, show you a picture also, because this can also be charged from a solar charger. So on really extended trips, if I don't have enough batteries here, I'll typically take my solar charger. Uh, but a seven day trip I typically don't, but this has four AA batteries in it. Uh, then I've got uh, this uh, backup lithium battery for my Garmin Rhino, but in my Rhino pack I've actually got a pack with, uh, with AA batteries in it. Uh, this is just another, another backup. I carry a backup battery for my, my range finder. Um, and my range finding binoculars and then a little power adapter so this can actually plug into that that goal zero and then i can charge uh, a multitude of different things from my my iphone uh, to my my uh, uh, garmin uh, um, devices to uh, my my uh, apple ipod uh, shuffle on there as well then inside this bag typically this is for uh, when I actually get an animal down. I've got a, a hunter orange vest uh, inside of this little bag so I can take that out and uh, drape it over the animal or I can wear it myself, uh, especially during, during rifle hunting season. Uh, I've got a, a bone saw here. Um, a lot of people just need a knife to, to do it, but I'll sometimes use the bone saw for other things in camp, cutting, cutting down limbs. Uh, on trees that I'm, I'm using for my hammock and stuff, but you could you could reduce weight if you don't want to carry a bone saw pretty pretty easily. Um, I've got a uh, Kestrel uh, caping knife. Um, this is a very lightweight, very sharp, good steel uh, caping knife. I've got 50 feet of Dyneema cord. Uh, again, redundancy. I actually carry an extra headlamp. This is very lightweight. Takes one battery, but elect electrically if something happens to my main headlamp I've got a backup and don't have to come out of the woods just because my my headlamp goes bad and then I've got a, a knife uh, that allows me to, to exchange blade this happens to be outdoor edge there's several companies out there um, but this knife here uh, this blade actually can be replaced 
And then I take uh, two extra blades uh, with this as well. So that's kind of the top pouch on my, my bag. It's both uh, my, my day trip bag and my, my pack-in bag. Um, so here's the contents of that solar bag. I rarely, if ever, take this. It's only on really extended trips that I'll, I'll tend to take this bag, but it's got a, a fold-out Brunton solar charger. Uh, this folds up really nicely, and, uh, and then when it unfolds, is is really large and has good uh, recharging capability, especially in the back field. Uh, I carry an extra Goal Zero. Uh, these things are really lightweight, and that way if the other one goes bad, it's okay. But also, then I can have one of these in my day pack and then carry the other uh, with this, and that way this can stay at camp if need be and just be charging up four AA batteries while I've got my other four AA batteries in my pack in case I need it for flashlights or other gear, thing like that. Just for redundancy, just a little lightweight cord too. Uh, I could always leave this in camp charging a, a phone or a device uh, while still having my other one in my pack for, for emergencies. Um, so typically this all, all packs up in their, their own little, little bags as well inside of a, another Cuban fiber bag also. So my next two bags are my, my sleep system when I'm out in the woods. Uh, the first is my sleeping bag. Um, this is by Z-Packs. I'll refrain from pulling that all the way out, but it's in a Cuban fiber bag to make sure it stays nice and dry. Uh, this bag by, by uh, uh, Z-Packs is actually what's called a top quilt and not a sleeping bag. It's got a zipper up the back side, so it's meant to be used for hammocks, and I'll show you that in a second. And uh, one day I'll try to do a video of my sleep setup and how a hammock works. But the gear I carry is also set up that if I'm not sleeping in a hammock between trees, I can also go to the ground and use the tarp in this with my, uh, with my trekking poles as uh, kind of like an A-frame little tarp uh, with a, a sleeping pad on the ground. So I've got this top quilt in there, a uh, sleeping bag. Then in here, I've got everything else. The bag that I have for this actually doesn't go with this sleep pad. I actually have a hammock sleeping pad. And this is a place you can actually save some weight. A lot of people use what's called a bottom quilt, uh, which will be slung. It's like a sleeping bag that's slung under the hammock and is a lot lighter weight than an actual pad. However, what you're sacrificing there is if you have to go to the ground, say you're in an area where you can't find a good spot to, to sleep between trees, uh, then you're not gonna have a pad on the ground to, to sleep on. Whereas with this setup, by having the pad, it's really nice in the hammock, plus I can instantly go to the ground, throw my tarp on the ground uh, that I carry in my bag, then uh, throw up the, the A-frame uh, uh, tarp over the top of that, and then have my sleeping bag that will still zip up in the back, even though it's a top quilt, which is nice and roomy in that hammock, doesn't feel constricting, then I can zip it up like a sleeping bag. So inside of this, we're gonna open this up. The reason I have this bag here is it serves as a bag, but it also serves to inflate uh, my hammock uh, pad that's in there. Again, it's not that pad that's shown on the bag. I just use this because it's also inflatable. Inside of here, I've got all of my um, stakes in here. Um, MSR Groundhog stakes with night eyes. These night eyes make it really easy to tighten tarps and things without having to worry about or worry about knots. So I've got uh, got that there. Then next, I've got my Cuban fiber tarp. This is the tarp that goes over my hammock, or again can act as a tent on the ground if if I need it to. Next is my actual hammock itself. This is a hammock with a, a bug net. It's double layered. This is by War Bonnet Outdoors. Um, and the double layer allows you to slide a pad inside of it as well as I can slide gear in there to help keep it warm, especially uh, stuff that I'm gonna help keep me warm in the morning. 
And then finally in here, I've actually got the, the hammock pad itself, which blows up and fits nicely inside that sleeve inside of the hammock so it's not shifting around. Creates a really nice, just warm cocoon to sleep in. It's really comfortable. The last thing here that you don't see, inside of this hammock bag, once the, the top quilt uh, sleeping bag comes out, sorry, not the hammock bag, the sleeping bag comes out, this has a nice uh, soft surface on it so I can take this bag, flip it inside out, stuff my jacket in there and it becomes a nice pillow to sleep on at nighttime with adding hardly any weight to my backpacking system. So you can see where I, I save a lot of weight. Um, you can save more again if you want to go away from the pad, but I like the versatility of this that I can really sleep anywhere I want. The nice thing about a hammock setup is even if I'm on a steep hillside somewhere on a canyon, as long as there's trees there, I can find a nice place to set up my hammock. I can, I can sleep just about anywhere that I want with this setup. All right, next up is the clothes bag that I carry out in the, in the woods. Uh, again, all wrapped up separately in a, in a Cuban fiber bag to keep everything nice and dry. So we'll just pull this open and pull things out. Uh, first, I've got two extra t-shirts. Uh, keep me smelling fresh, especially with game. I've got uh, two pair of uh, First Light uh, Arrow Wool Skivvies. Um, somehow a third pair got in here. Usually I wear one, and that must have been what I was thinking. I wear one and have two extra pairs in there when I go out in the woods. Um, I carry a little soap with me too, so if I have to do laundry or something, I've, I've got just like one ounce of the soap. I can go to a stream bed, uh, biodegradable soap, and, uh, and wash up. Uh, I've got uh, two extra pair of, of socks in there. If it's uh, really uh, cold weather, I'll also carry a pair of... Uh, cold weather winter socks, but these are possum wool socks. Possum is one of the few animals that actually has hollow fibers in the hair, and they tend to be a pest in New Zealand. Um, so that's where these socks are made. Uh, they're about 40% uh, warmer than, than wool socks just because the fibers are hollow in there. Um, so that's a neat thing to look at. And then of course I'm wearing one pair of socks as well. So that's three pair total. I can double these up if I need to as well. And then I've got a, a heavy weight uh, layer to go under my pants. Uh, if things get cold, I can layer up with that heavy weight, my pants. Uh, then I'll show you in a next video uh, the puffy layers I take. I take a puffy pant layer, and then I can throw my rain layer over that. So that's, that's these, a pant layer, a puffy layer, and then a, a, a rain layer over that can really help me get down to some cold temperatures. So on the bottom of my bag, um, there's just a few last bags that I want to show you. This is just my, my puffy gear, and I'll either carry uh, the Kuyu uh, Ultra Jacket and Pant, or I'll sub out the Ultra Jacket uh, for their Super, Super Down Pro, which is a, a, a little bit uh, bulkier. But these things pack down to almost nothing and really kind of uh, let you get into some... Uh, some colder temperatures when you when you layer these and uh, again they just weigh nothing and they slide into those bags really nicely and just a uh, good insurance when you're at those times of years where it uh, seems nice but could get snowstorms coming in i've had several times when i when i've been out early season september and got 
really cold, wet, slushy snowstorms coming in, and these allowed me to really, really weather those 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 nicely. Uh, this here's my uh, my game bag game. I don't think I'm actually going to get in and, and pull all of these out, but there's enough here for uh, for four quarters uh, on on an elk or a large animal, and then uh, uh, extra bag in there for for the the spare meat uh, when you're boning out the the back straps and then another spare bag for the scrap meat so I can kind of keep the back straps and tenderloins uh, separate from, from the others. But that packs down pretty small. If my trip changes, say I'm hunting deer or something, uh, this can be can be cut in half and save you, save you a lot of weight there. So here's the actual gear list of everything. I don't include the actual brand names in these, but it, it starts just showing kind of my total gear weight, then the weight of the backpack, which is minus the bow and everything that I carry in my pockets, kind of ready to hunt. Uh, there's some uh, recommendations there if you really want to go ultra light, how you can cut some weight there. And this list is by, by no means exhaustive, but it's kind of a good base point from which you can start and you can either build and, and bring more gear or you can take away gear. Uh, as needed for for your individual hunts. So I hope this uh, really helps you out and, and guides you in finding the, the list of gear that, that works best for you and, and your hunts. So have a great hunt and thank you so much for watching.